Welcome back, everyone, to the podcast under your bed. Y'all hey. know us by now, hopefully. Maybe this is the first hopefully. time tuning in for a good one. <laughs> we got your hostess, Taylor. Hey, guys. And I'm your host, CJ. What do we got today, Taylor? We got a fun one. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we are kicking off spooky season in the best way possible with Hocus Pocus 2. Numero dos, <laughs> y'all. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I mean, many, many, many years in the making, and here we are. Yes, it is true. Honestly, this is like... <laughs> Our generation knows the original, and it is so near and dear to our hearts, right? I it doesn't it feel like I don't know how you felt, but just seeing everyone back on screen again, I was like nostalgia overload. Is what yes, it kind of felt yeah, like. Yeah, and it's it's hard to not love this remake um, <clears throat> because of the nostalgia, perhaps. I mean, For the sure. original Hocus Pocus is one my family watches every single Halloween. I'm sure Absolutely. the majority Absolutely. of y'all out there listening probably return to this, especially if you have kids. Uh, and... I don't know, I think, uh, a little spoiler here, but the consensus is maybe, uh, we really enjoyed this, and, uh, we got a pretty fun, uh, episode for y'all to listen to, so, yeah. uh, man, of course, this movie is bringing back the OG cast, yo! Yes, so it wonderful. is. Uh, I wish we had more. But the fact that we get Sarah, Winifred, Mary, and Billy, I'm... I'm like yeah. good with that. Yeah. I wish it I wish we had the kids back in some form, but I know scheduling wise it just like didn't work out. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And you know, honestly, I like the uh revamp with some, you know, new young characters in there and uh and it was able to not feel like some forced remake and kind of expanded on the original world um so i i think there's a lot of good stuff working with it bringing in uh some additional new cast so yeah and i i don't know do you maybe we're just showing our age i honestly <laughs> did not know any of the kiddos in this one because we have let's see whitney peak who was in that chilling adventures of sabrina but i did not get far enough <laughs> <laughs> to see yeah. her in it, or maybe I just don't remember it well. But then, uh, is it Belissa? Is that right? Am I uh, reading that right, or did I make a typo? Which is, I I couldn't did I tell make you. a typo. I, that, that might. It's got to be Melissa, huh? It is. The, no, the it's, is Belissa. New, it's Belissa. It's Belissa. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I, it shows I us dig it. shows you all how much we know the young cast in here. Um, yeah, I didn't recognize <laughs> yeah. any of them myself. Maybe my daughter would, um, but uh, enjoyed them, right? So, um, oh yeah. You know, we don't need to do it, but uh, for those of you that are completely oblivious out there, we got Bette Midler oh coming back. Uh, our, you know, kind of lead witch, if you would, Winifred and Sarah Jessica Parker, and then yeah, of course the uh, SJP. Yeah, uh, Kathy Najimi. Na I'm gonna mess her Na name Jimmy. up. Always. I'm, Na I'm Jimmy, I'm Oma. <laughs> for once, I am a little bit confident we have that correct. <laughs> all right, for one time. Good. So <laughs> obviously, great seeing them all. They're crushing it back in their original roles. You know, nothing to. Nothing that we can really, like, rip apart there. I mean, it's just oh, so no. much fun. No, and the new characters for the older crowd are also recognizable and fun because you get Sam Richardson in this and Tony Hale, and I'm mm. sure kids did not appreciate right. their inclusion, but I was really excited about yeah, it. Yeah, those were great additions in this, you know, pretty stacked cast uh oh and doug jones is back sorry yeah, we should have said doug jones is back our uh, yeah. zombie uh maybe boyfriend uh billy <laughs> and um you know his classic role uh just crushing it again so oh yeah love him so this is uh all taken under the wing of ann fletcher our director Ooh. uh she's directed things like step up this is us uh 27 dresses hot pursuit uh, and Dumplin. And Dumplin. That's yeah, one I'm not familiar with. Yeah, that Netflix with. movie. Ooh, Netflix okay. movie. It's uh, cute. All right, all right. And written by Jen D'Angelo. Uh, she's written episodes of Cougar Town, Workaholics. Uh, you know, so strong comedy beats coming out. Mm -hmm. um, a movie coming out soon uh, called Totally Killer. Um, and then uh, we, I think we get to the rest of the crew a little later maybe. Um 
The, For sure, you know, and it is a pretty female-driven uh, yes. crew, which is pretty unusual, and it was nice to pull it up and go, oh, wow, there's another lady, there's another lady, like... I yeah. enjoyed that. I thought that was cool. Yeah, and if ever there was a movie that really, you know, deserved that female touch, it was this one, you know. Uh, totally agree. Our, you know, lead, you know, we sort of have like an antagonistic group of witches and a protagonist group, and, you know, they're all uh, female characters, um, and it's uh, it's just a strong movie all, all throughout. So uh, those uh, women really represented. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, if you are completely oblivious to uh, Hocus Pocus 2 having come out, quick uh, spoiler-free <laughs> plot summary for you. The witches are back, and this time on a mission to take revenge on Salem and the descendants of their oppressors. Luckily, a new group of teens is there to save the day. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Love it! <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, let's get right into it. Yeah. I loved how they brought back, like, all the same tropes from the first movie, all the gags, <laughs> I guess, but they gave them a facelift for this new, uh, you know, movie, this this new age they're in, I thought was hysterical and wonderful. Um, other thoughts? I mean, to me, this is, I guess, the way I'll frame it. This is about the best outcome I could have hoped for mm. with a sequel to something that is near and dear to my heart. My biggest concern watching this or going into this was that it was going to obliviate like all like obliterate all the good memories I had of the original by yes. just killing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um but it was it was funny. Sometimes there were a few beats that didn't work for me or felt right. too much of a callback. But overall, I appreciated the callbacks. I thought it, like you said, the updates were really good. Um, good facelift, as you as you noted, and it just was a lot of fun. And again, best outcome, I think. So, what was your kind of like? Yeah, thoughts? totally agree. So I was laughing with my brother last night. I was like, "Watch Hocus Pocus 2. He's like. Oh, uh, yeah, bro, Ronnie. that's going to be like watching Sandlot 2, where you're just set up for oh, disappointment, you know? It's so true. And it is so hard to take such a loved movie and uh, create a sequel for it. Um, or, you know, like, it was a great choice not to remake the original and to go with the sequel. And, yes, you know, yes. luckily they were able to use all of the original strengths from the first movie, being the cast of the lead witches, right? Because yes, that 100. is what everybody loves so much um, about the original. Uh, and then, you know, overall, it's just a strong production um, through and through. Uh, I didn't see, like, any... I didn't have any problems uh, with... Well, a couple little elements, I guess. You know, I, th I thought it was just really strong. It had this, like, great heightened like hollywood feel to it but uh with like a very soft subtle touch um so uh it was it was really well finessed in my opinion oh i agree it just oh i, I just love that you brought up sandlot too <laughs> that is a rough affair <laughs> it's so sad i know i mean um, it just goes to show like it's so hard to do it without bastardizing the movie <laughs> for sure and there's <clears throat> such a huge time gap in between these that for a while i was wondering well how are they gonna address that everyone's older how are they yeah. gonna do this and i kind of love they never even talked about it i wasn't even bothered i thought everybody actually looked like good enough where i was like i don't care like and i think yeah. i guess that was my general sentiment like throughout was that I was enjoying myself so much that the things that maybe didn't totally work, I could kind of just look over. Um, sure. Yeah. I would say uh, <clears throat> maybe the the difference given the the age of or how old the original movie is. I, I don't even remember what year that came out. Was that 93? 93? 93? 93, I think. Um, so... You know, it's, you know, going on uh, 30 years. Um, but uh, so the, the difference, I would say, with Hocus Pocus 2 is it, it sort of felt at times like it was geared towards, like, the new audience of kids, like preteens, and, and at times embodied characteristics of, 
you know, maybe movies or shows like uh, The Descendants. I know my daughter watches, and I think. Oh, I was like, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's, this, <laughs> this is, is a like, kids yes, it's okay, a kids yeah. thing, which Sorry. you know, it's it's great for the kids, uh, but there's sort of like this new generation bring up with a certain style of filmmaking mm. that this movie sort of embodied that is a slight shift in tone and style uh from you know the movies of the 90s which you know is probably it had a this good thing. spirit though <laughs> yeah it had the spirit of it with updating it and that said actually there was a few things like what was it? Oh, the CGI bird. That was one of those examples where I was like, why are we doing the CGI? But I also, I understand it's just a part of what it is, and yeah. it's a very minor complaint, but they used the CGI. I was not a massive fan I of. jotted that down as uh, one of the weaknesses of the movie was CGI in general. Um, yes. There were a few effects uh, throughout, like the witches flying against green screen. I just... I was like, they really half-assed this at times. Yeah. And it was so surprising for a movie of this budget and caliber. Um, like, why would that be where you fall short? Um, uh, and, you know, again, it's going back to those practical effects. Like, the effects in the movie that worked well were the practical ones. And if you look at the original Hocus Pocus, I, I think a lot more of the, like, broom-flying effects were... Uh, either rear projection or practical and removing wires, you know, and those worked better than the CGI effects in this movie, in my Totally, totally agree. I mean, I think you're hard-pressed to find any example where you're going to say the CGI is so much better than a practical effect, especially as it ages out, because yeah. this will age out, even in a couple of years. Some of these effects are going to look even dodgier than they do right now. Yeah. But again, it's a pretty, overall, it's a pretty minor complaint. I think just tonally, there was a, like I said, there's a few things that I felt were, I mean, but it's a kid's movie. I guess this is the thing I have to keep in mind. It mm -hmm. is for us, because we are the generation that, like, grew up with this movie. But then I have to keep in my mind, it is a kids movie and it is for kids. It is not like geared specifically to an adult audience. And so some of that humor doesn't quite jive the older I get, but Right. Uh but I mean overall ratings, Taylor, where are you landing on this? Okay, so obviously where we start Monsters Under Your Bed. Mm. I mean, come on. Like <laughs> I think we I think we agreed at this point it's not really fair to give any movie like a zero, but this this, this one, one might is about as close as it could get. Be a zero, yeah. I think um, I, think I actually you're right. think the original is scarier. I was going to say it myself. I think the original was scarier. Uh Yeah. There were moments like Going through the catacombs that were pretty creepy. Uh, the witches uh, lair, their their house was. Billy was scary too in the scarier. original. Billy you didn't was, know way he was good. Scarier. Yep, yeah, and they come out right away and say he's good in this one. Um, yeah, so well, he's chatting in this one versus yeah, scaring a bunch of kids chasing him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, and it was um, with the cat getting hit by the car and stuff. Like some of that was right. pretty dark, actually. Yeah, yeah, and blown up in the sunlight. So, um, completely agree. Can we give it a zero? Is uh, that fair? Do we give it a half point? I, I don't know. I think we might give this a zero. Uh, that's where I'm landing. I, I guess. think it's fair though. If I have though, to give it a one, not, it gets a one. I guess, but it's not trying to be scary. So I think yeah. it's a fair thing it's to give it not what it's no to be. scares. Yeah, fair. Okay, so then on to the overall rating, mm. which I think this one's actually going to be a bit tough. Where are you landing? I'm going to put you on the spot first. <laughs> I'm going to give it a three. Um, that's my typical middle of the road. It was very good movie. Uh, but, you know, one, it's a sequel. You're never going to do better than the original. Uh, no. Two, there are some modern... Uh, moments in this that I felt like just didn't quite land. Some of the tone, um, tonal qualities to it of sort of like catering to the younger generation with that kind of new style of filmmaking mm -hmm. didn't totally land for me. Um, but overall, very strong movie in production, story, acting, 
you know, crushed it across the board. But, uh, you know, this isn't one that's going to be like replacing the legacy of the original. No, no. <laughs> um, I'm on a similar, my ideology is like very similar to yours, but I don't think the rating would be the same because mm. I think even with the original, I would probably only give the original three. And I think that's being a bit gracious because despite the fact it is a deep love of mine, I don't think it's like the best made film so i think this one Fair. is a half a step to a full step down from that mm -hmm. so i think given how excited i was about this i think i'm gonna give it a two and a half which i think again is being All a bit right, gracious okay. it's probably closer to a two but i just had such a good time watching it like when it first started and you're getting the overhead shot, which is very, I don't think this is too spoilery, nah. which is very similar to the opening of the first one. I was losing my mind. I was so getting excited there, hearing huh? the music, yeah, um, yeah. just seeing all of it ah. again. And it just, that for me is enough to be like, it earns its <laughs> extra little half point yeah, because yeah. I was so happy. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think the bottom line is, if you liked the original, if you loved the original, go see the second. It's it's great. Throw it on for your kids. I mean, we had some young kids watching it with us. We had a big viewing party, and oh, uh, I love it. I I didn't see any kid like get scared at any moment. You know, um, there there isn't any like sort of like adult humor in there that's too racy for kids. So. No, less uh, than the first one. Less than the less first, than one, the first right? one, Yeah. And these kids are a lot more in tune, I think, yeah. than we were. <laughs> so it's really funny to see that kind of taken down a notch. Right, for sure. So I I say throw it on for any occasion. You know, watch Halloween, it before Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, watch yeah. it before Halloween. This October is a great time to go see it. So everybody... You know what's happening next. Oh, We're yeah. going to take a quick break, <laughs> and we got a themed cocktail for you. It's delicious. So uh, good. And our deep dive critique. Yay! Welcome to the podcast Under Your Bed. There'll be drinks, critique, and perhaps a few murders. You're all invited, but once the podcast has begun, there's no way out. The ghosts are waiting. So won't you join me for the podcast under your bed? <laughs> That's a fun one. I, think, I like that. I think I nailed Damn, it. Damn, Taylor, I nailed it. <laughs> you've been a witch for Halloween before, haven't you? Because that... You crushed oh, it. Oh, Sarah Sanderson, actually. Were you perfect? Yes. Oh, Love we should put it. it up on the gram. Yes. We should put that up on the gram. I like it. Um. Anybody who has, <laughs> uh, let's see your best Sanderson sister yes. uh, costumes on the gram or Facebook or Twitter. Or Twitter. Send it our way. Things. We're on it all. Um, we would love to see that. Maybe we should have our own drag race. Yes, ah! yes, yes, May yes. Maybe that'll be our game is we pick our favorite drag. Uh, we, we judge the drag competition. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm going to be really biased because I, we're getting into spoilers, so I think it's fine. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I will have to heavily touch on that because I am a huge Drag Race fan and I lost my mind when I saw that. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so Absolutely. happy. Absolutely. All right, y'all. So, you know, we got a fun cocktail today. I'm, I'm just going to mm -hmm. throw it out there. Uh, you got to give us some kudos here because we're drinking at 9 in the morning for y'all to get this episode <laughs> out Authentic. by Friday. We don't um, cheat. But this is a pretty good brunch cocktail if uh, if we had to have one. Uh, this is the uh, Hocus Pocus Fizz by Red Wine Dragons. Thank you. And oh, so good. It's got some rum. It's got some juice and some topped with Prosecco. It is uh, It's kind of like a Bellini almost, like a mimosa sort of thing. Yeah, I was going to say, it is kind of because you get the orange juice, but then you get the little splash of cranberry, which is nice. So mm. it kind of zhuzhes it up a bit. Shushes and up. yeah, it's really yummy. It is yummy. And uh, it'll get my morning kicked off. So 
Oh, yeah. Watch my pr- productivity after this. Cheers out there. Here's to <laughs> Cheers, uh, getting guys. the magic started. Um, Taylor. Oop, there it is. Yeah, there mm-hmm. it is. Oh, love the glass, by the way. Kudos. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, there we go. I, Home goods. <laughs> I was in Spirit Halloween looking for a glass for this particular episode, and I just, I just couldn't bring myself to get one because they weren't. Man, they just weren't cutting it. You have a spirit Halloween, though. Oh, it came back, y'all. It was gone for two years. We lost all hope, and it was back. And, oh, we spent, like, an hour and a half in there, at least. I'm so jealous of oh. you. I think Actually, I think we had a mini one pop up in my really <laughs> dodgy mall. But mm. I, it's the first time ever. For years, I have been, like... Where is my spirit Halloween? I and I think it's finally come, but I, I'm pretty sure it's small, but I don't even care. It's fine. Love it. Yeah, and it's right around the corner <laughs> from us. So, Taylor, oh, you. <laughs> you're in the hot seat. Send I it am. with it's our my turn. spoiler plot review, please. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, our film opens in Salem in ni- or 1953. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Let's try that again. You're reading. All right. Our- <laughs> All right. Our film opens in Salem in 1653, where a young Winifred Mm. Sanderson refuses to get married, of course. Her slight (laughs) against the Reverend Trask's recommendation gets her banished and her sisters, Sarah and Mary, taken away. While a spider causes a distraction, the girls are able to flee to the Forbidden Woods, where they eventually encounter a witch. The witch tells Winifred that it's her 16th birthday and that she has the power so the witch ends up giving Winifred the infamous book, book, yes. as you know, <laughs> <laughs> and the girls work together to start causing havoc in the village. And obviously we know how that original story ended up. So we mm. jump to the present day of Salem on Halloween where protagonists Becca and Izzy discuss uh, Becca's birthday plans, which include a witchy ritual and a horror movie marathon, which genuinely sounds like my dream come true. I don't know Love how you it. feel, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, they then have an awkward encounter with a girl named Cassie and her boyfriend Mike and from this interaction we gathered that the girls used to be really good friends but now there's been uh, falling out of some sort after Real school shame. Beck and Izzy run in yeah, I know, right? Run into Cassie's dad, who happens to be the descendant of the Reverend Trask, but he's a completely different guy He, the mayor loves Halloween oh, and he's He's Tony Hill. He's such a goofball and just kind of like an oblivious guy, but really sweet. <laughs> uh, the girls then head to the magic shop, which is actually the repurposed Sanderson cottage. That was a fun little nod um, where the I owner Gilbert. It. So God gives Becca a birthday gift comprising of a candle and angelica leaves. And the leaves are meant to uh, lift curses of some kind. So the girls end up in the Forbidden Woods and they perform their ritual by lighting Gilbert's candle, which then burns with this black flame, as we know is going to be a problem. The ground starts to shake and it breaks. (laughs) Yeah, always causing problems. (laughs) So the ground shakes and breaks open and the Sanderson sisters emerge. Becca and Izzy try to stop the sisters. It was so good. (laughs) Becca and Izzy. That was probably the best moment of the movie. Honestly, it was it. I think I had goosebumps. If I'm being completely honest with myself, yeah. I kind of lost my Fuck shit yes. a little bit. Yes. <laughs> the girls are able to actually stop the sisters from eating them, though, by convincing them that they're not teenagers, but they're adults who have stayed youthful thanks to serums and lotions infused with children's souls. Stupid witch. <laughs> jerked every time so the girls take the sisters to walgreens which my god and eventually they figure out that they've been hoodwinked which causes becca and izzy to flee back to the magic shop at the shop we find out that gilbert actually witnessed the witches in the 90s and orchestrated their whole return with the help of book mm. Uh, breathing. All right. Gilbert believes that the (laughs) sisters are just misunderstood figures, but he's quickly proven wrong when they lock the girls in the cellar and they concoct a plan to become all powerful and take revenge against Trask and Salem. Mm. And just to further prove they're not super good witches, they ensure Gilbert's help by putting a death curse on him. Super. 
Uh, Becky well and played. Izzy well use the. Yeah, right. That was a, probably a good move. Becky and Izzy use the Angelica lease to escape the cellar and to keep uh, Mr. Trask safe. They send him home to break up a party. They find out that Cassie is throwing. Gilbert, on his adventure, digs up Billy to find him very much alive, and it turns out that Billy has been awake since the 90s. That's Oops, brutal, so y'all. Down. Catch a nap. I know. I mean, that's kind of how I feel this morning, to be fair. <laughs> Gilbert tricks Billy into helping him gather ingredients by saying that he's going to do a spell that's going to kill Winifred and that he's going to clear Billy's name because it turns out... Billy only kissed Winifred oh, once and was not her lover. So Billy, to clear his twist, name, yo. agrees to this plan. I know, big twist. I want to talk about that later, actually. I love it. That. I think it's great. Um, this, uh, I have feelings. Uh, the sisters Uh-oh. find themselves at... Pros and cons. The sisters find themselves at the town's party and list the help of the crowd in finding Trask by <laughs> bewitching them through song, very much like the OG film. The girls and the witches end up converging at Cassie's house, and after a little spat, they all work together and are able to trap the witches in a salt circle. After collecting all the items, Billy figures out Gilbert is actually helping the witches, which causes Gilbert to take his head and flee. Just rude. Just not nice. Uh, While the witches are trapped, Cassie, Izzy, and Becca, and Mike, who is Cassie's boyfriend, make up after realizing they are all unintentionally like have played a part in in this little split so they kind of make up and everybody's happy but during this Winifred Sarah and Mary are saved by a pair of Roombas that eat the salt (laughs) they immediately kidnap Cassie Uh, Becca tries to stop them and a glow emerges from her hand something we actually saw in a previous scene but more pertinent here so all parties now so that's Gilbert Billy, the Sanderson sisters, and all the girls end up back in these woods where the witches send Gilbert flying and start to recite this part of this incantation, which gives them all heightened powers. While looking on, Becca realizes, because her hands are glowing again, that she is a witch and she's able to distract Mary, Sarah, and Winifred long enough for Izzy to go and rescue Cassie. Becca speaks uh, to Book saying, I don't think you really want to do this or be a part of this. So Book chooses her as the new keeper, which I have to say, that is Whoa! like the most ultimate betrayal. That's cold, yo, cold. I felt that one. I have one. thoughts on that, I too. I felt that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about that. Damn, So Book. the girls reunite. <laughs> I know, right? The girls reunite, and Book shows them the warning, which Winifred had ignored earlier of using this spell, which is that, Power is meant to be shared, and there's a price to be paid for wielding it alone. Uh, the girls work Dashing together over by the head sh- with those themes. I know it's it's a little it's a little much, but friendship is magic. Um, <laughs> and the girls work together by sharing Becca's magic to protect themselves. Uh, during this time, Winifred is able to complete the spell, but she quickly realizes the price that she has to pay. And that is her sisters. So Sarah and Mary disappear and Winifred, heartbroken, begs the girls to help her undo the spell. So Becca, Izzy and Cassie work together and they're able to send Winifred to wherever Mary and Sarah are. Uh, Winifred thanks them and tells them they're lucky to have each other and she disappears maybe to another sequel. We don't know. We'll see. Um, Gilbert comes back to save the day, which is far too late. (laughs) Um, And the group starts to realize that now that the witches are gone, all the spells are reversing. So Gilbert safe from his death curse and Billy disappears into the void as well. Uh, The girls walk home and we do realize that the witch from the opening is still lurking about. And that is the end, except there's a post credit scene that I missed. So I didn't see it. Did you? You didn't like let the credits roll for like five seconds. You just were like, fuck it. It was outside and it was a little cold in Michigan. Uh, So (laughs) we didn't realize. Oh, no. You didn't miss anything. Tell me. Give me the post credits. uh, It's just a setup, right? If they want to do a sequel. No, it was a musical bit. It was a no. Uh, there's a part after that. I, oh, I heard that part. Shit, I missed oh, it. Oh, you missed it too. And you're throwing a lot <laughs> of shade like, at me. You little fucking kids got to go to bed. It is bedtime. 
credits Thank pause. you. <laughs> I was in the same boat. I have my niece and nephew <laughs> in the neighborhood kids. So oh, we man. turned off. I think it's something where the dust particles or whatever are around. So it leaves ah. it open that you could do a sequel or not do a sequel. Oh, no. Now I need to go Apologies if I have it. that wrong, guys. Well, I thought CJ. Maybe, maybe we'll add a little bonus after we review that for yeah. a second. All right. <laughs> oh, well done, Taylor. Round of applause. Thank you. You still got Ooh, the magic. I'm going to take a drink. Mm, that's cool. worth it. So mm-hmm. I think, per usual, story, 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 let's talk yeah. about, uh, you know, how we liked sort of expanding this world uh, with seeing more witches and also kind of getting some additional backstory. Um, I, I, want, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so first I just want to say I really appreciate the fact, story-wise, that we did not repeat the same thing. I very much thought from the trailer it felt like we were going to rehash Mm -hmm. the exact same storyline as the first one. They're trying to get kids' souls, blah, blah, blah. I'm very happy we did not go that route. It gave it a lot more to work with. So, yeah, yay, that was a bonus for me. But twisted, yeah. Yes, um, it obviously it's a group of kids against the witches. That that's for sure accurate. But now you've kind of got this face off dynamic versus like the kids just trying to, <laughs> to survive the night. It's a little different. Yes, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, that's refreshing, and I loved the backstory. Getting like seeing the three Sanderson sisters uh, as children in. What the, the 1600s? Um, I thought it was really fun, and you know, help like develop uh, some of their backstory. And I'm very interested in why you didn't like the little twist that uh, what's um, Winifred uh, claims to have this lover, but in fact, it was more of this like kiss in the backwoods. And he's like, "What are you talking about? I don't love you." And curious your thoughts. All right. Two, so two points on that. I'll touch on the Billy one first because I think the other one's going to go somewhere. So um, for the for the Billy thing, I think my only issue with any situation like this is retconning can be just annoying sometimes where we've lived with this one story forever and now all of a mm. sudden it's not that story and it does make the timeline a bit confusing of how things went down given that she kissed billy when she was like 16 and you're and they don't die until they're at 30s or 40s so some of that was a little confusing to me just again it's just something that takes me Is out it confusing, a little though? bit because sarah well, they're banished to that woods too at that point so i don't know it just leaves us I, I don't know. I just thought it was a little funky. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I thought it kind of made sense where, like, Sarah's always sort of claimed to have this, like, relationship. And, and Winifred's like, no, fuck you. He was my boyfriend or, you know, my lover. Um, so it sort of, like, fit well in, in that puzzle, I, I thought. Um, and It is fun in that regard. And it, I guess you're right. It can build up some of the first, but it also can detract from some of the first so it was like a weird okay. teetering for all me. right fair so what was the other point you were going to bring out oh so the backstory um when it first first started and you had little winifred uh huffing and puffing and she's mm. obviously very over the top mm. at first i was like oh my god is this gonna work like yeah, i don't know about you were this a little worried but yeah I was a little worried, but the more it went on, I actually thought all three younger uh, versions did a really good job. Um, yes. I was actually very impressed by the end of it. I like seeing Winifred have that more maternal. I mean, she always does to an extent, yeah. um, but it was kind of nice to see that even at a young age, you know? I thought it helped, like, kind of build that whole bond of, of sisterhood yes. between them. It was great. Uh um, I agree. The acting was, you know, just didn't quite get there. And I think that's maybe a problem of like forcing a child actor to uh, replicate. Yeah. Replicate Bette these Midler. really exaggerated. Bette exactly. Yeah. And, and what are also very exaggerated characters. So a lot of the exaggerated mm-hmm. like actions, uh, kind of came out. Um, you know, like things like the finger on the face since I don't know, like little things that were very like characteristic and natural for mm-hmm. Bette Midler. The mannerisms just, and yeah, yeah, the mannerisms just didn't quite 
play right on screen. Uh, uh, you know who I thought crushed it, though, was uh, the little girl that played the young Sarah. Uh, and I thought, Mary, actually. I thought Mary was great, too. Yeah, they were both they fantastic. They were a bit stronger, I thought. I completely agree. And uh, But particularly Sarah, for some reason, I thought just crushed it. Um, She's uh, perfect. Yeah, I didn't see a, any flaw with, with uh, her character. Maybe that's because it's a slightly more like... Uh, Subdued. Well, or... like like a uh, aloof character where uh, where some uh, of the exaggerated um, you know mannerisms work. Uh, so m- maybe that's where she had a little bit of grace built into the character. But um, I thought I, Winifred did get there it. in the end, though. At least, yeah, totally, totally, totally. By the, I, and they with all the sisters. It did not ruin anything for me. I agree. I was a little like on my toes, like oh, oh, I, I don't know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. But it was all redeemed when, boom, the three OG came back. Oh, man. Come on. I think Mm. it was the best moment of the whole movie. Uh, You know, it was so dramatic. And, like, they they really left you in the dark. And and then it was, like, these, like, flashes of lightning. And you're seeing and you're like, the ca- and you're like, it's the costume. <laughs> yes, yeah, getting those like little like silhouettes of the characters and the and the laughs and and the voices coming in. Um, and I thought the editing, the cinematography, the acting was beautiful. And you realize like, oh, it's not real lightning; it's their like magic, like sparks flying around, which is really cool. But then it was completely shattered by a musical piece. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you're on the same page with this. Because I didn't know. And it's really funny because we'll have to talk about the two because I think they elicit very different feelings. So when the music number started, I immediately lost all faith and Mm -hmm. went, oh, no, oh, no, this is not good. We're really contrived to throw this music number in. However, this is my only thing about it. When... It's going, and I was going, oh, my God, why are we doing this? Like, is this to just sell iTunes, like, songs? This is so (laughs) annoying. Um, Because it just didn't feel organic in any way, shape, or form. They didn't break out into a music number the first time they came back. So that made no sense to me. But then the girls are running, and she's like, who are they performing for? And I thought, okay, first off, that was kind of a funny joke. And then Sarah pops out and goes, you. And you go, Okay, so we're not just going to start randomly breaking into dance numbers. Okay, so I Mm -hmm. reeled it back a bit. And the second time watching it, I enjoyed it more because I knew we weren't going into a full blown music number. How I mean, how did you feel about it? Uh, I think that's pretty similar experience uh, that I had. Um, Yeah, I was like, oh, God, is this going to be like, are they like turning this into a musical like all these like young people? shows are now there it's like all these like musical numbers for no reason um and like i i get it they sang a lot in the original but it was always casting a spell and this was the only moment where i mean i suppose you could argue they are trying to cast a spell i it but it didn't play that way to me on screen no so um you know so i was i was just like why are they going into full-blown musical piece uh, in this. Now, that being said, something I realized after the fact, which, you know, just kind of explains it perhaps a little more, is the director, Ann Fletcher, has a huge stack of choreography credits. So it does sort of make sense that, yeah, she'd want to sprinkle in some, like, musical pieces, some some choreography. For and, sure. Um, so For that's, sure. All right, she's having fun doing what she loves to do. <laughs> and it, again, because it was short, I feel like it worked okay. And so on that vein, it feels like a good segue into the second music yeah. number, which, in my opinion, worked significantly better than that first one. It, um, yeah. So to- first off, total- I just... Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, a total sort of, like, replay of the I Put a Spell on You moment in the original. Um, I have some reservations about this new take, but go ahead. So, I have to say, I don't know how you felt watching this as a kid in the 90s, because I remember 
And I saw this movie so many times. Like, I was obsessed with this movie. So I right. watched it over and over and over. Mm-hmm. I never understood, and I asked my sister, and she said the same thing as, like, we got it as adults, obviously, but we never really got that they were, like, casting a spell. Under a spell. It, yes. In that first one, it wasn't, yeah. like, super apparent. So I think they actually, this is the only point I think uh, they did better than the original of it, is they made it significantly more clear that the group was under a spell because everybody okay. moves in unison, everybody's okay. doing, you know what I mean? Versus the first one where I was like, everyone's just really dancing a lot and having a good time. I'm really yeah. confused to why they didn't leave the party. <laughs> like, yeah. whatever, go help their kids, you know? So I know I, how you felt as a kid. I agree, as a kid watching the original, I did miss that too, and it wasn't until I yeah. rewatched it, you know, <laughs> that I like more recently that I was like, oh yeah, they're under a spell, of course. Um, yeah. Duh. But that being said, <laughs> as an adult watching the original, it is clear that they're under a spell. As an adult watching the second, it's very obvious that they're under a spell. And yes, I I think I liked the subtlety of the adults just being like forced to dance all night, as opposed yeah, to like yeah. partake in a choreographed like. Flash mob. <laughs> it's true. I will. I do think it's important, though, for them to distinguish, like, not doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So I will say it to me, it made sense that the next step would be to do like an elaborate group number. And actually, I think that musical be intercut with um kind of the montage i actually did really enjoyed that part of it i thought Mm -hmm. that was actually kind of fun but again i think that was just kind of the score working really well with the song and their little updates to it putting the spell in it and stuff so that ended up kind of working for me in a way i was a little surprised that i felt like it worked for me yeah that's fair i I thought it was really fun and i did i you know i didn't have a huge problem with this so i get criticisms though somebody's like the original is better. I'm not going to argue that. I think the original is mm. definitely better. But like, <laughs> I think this one worked. And because we're in this scene, um, yep. first off, this Halloween party looks like the dopest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and the, I want to go. The, the teen's house party? Or are you talking about the drag show? No, the, the town draggers. party. The giant yeah. town party. Yeah, yeah. The, the Halloween festival, fall festival thing looked How lit. can I get in that? Bobbin for apples, <laughs> drag race. What don't yes. they have? I know. Uh, apparently the best caramel apples in New England, so. Yeah, right on. And uh, so <laughs> we've got to touch on the drag race. Yep. That I did not know, and I died. I'm a huge drag race fan, and to see Ginger Min should have definitely won one of the seasons <laughs> she was on, and she hasn't, which is bullshit. So to get to see her playing Winifred, I died, and Again, this is just like such a nerdy drag race thing, but Cornbread also, Cornbread's amazing. I was really happy to see her in her. But Kamora Hall, who plays, uh, like, does the Sarah version, the drag Sarah. First uh. off, she's always gorgeous, so not a surprise there. She looks stunning. But she actually got eliminated on her season for horrible line delivery it was like an acting challenge she did so bad she and it became like kind of a running joke like how bad it was so to get to see her come back look excellent and do a great line delivery i was like yes kamara hall like, good for redemption. You. so uh, yes total redemption i loved that i thought it was such a fun little sprinkle in there yeah completely agree it was a Super fun moment, um, and I and I also love the fact that the Sanderson sisters lose in their own you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, drag show costume um, contest. Yeah, yeah uh, which I've heard before. I can't remember like Dolly Parton or something lost at as herself in a drag show before. Like nobody yes. knew it was her. And, uh, you I think know, that's so amazing. <laughs> I I think it's super funny that that happen um and you know i think that also is sort of on the like the comedic beats of this movie were very strong and i thought i was laughing throughout the whole thing um at times i felt like the writing was weak for the um uh the 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 new young covenant of girls um i i thought was uh 
I don't know, not as strong as, as uh, kind of the original, which is, and maybe it's just easier because it's such well-developed characters and you're familiar with their comedic beats, so it's easier to write to, I don't know. But it felt like, again, back to that sort of like, I'm, I'm calling it like, quote-unquote, like, Descendants um, uh, yeah. style filmmaking where uh, it's kind of this, like, new generation of filmmakers and making it in this little bit different style. And I don't know, it didn't always land for me. Oh, I'm definitely with you on that. Um, I think they're a great group of kids, uh, and they are clearly really good at acting, so that was, like, great. Nobody was uh, faltering at any point or looked weak in at any point. Yeah, yeah. But I, I will agree. I don't think... I. Th it's weird. They're the central characters, but in a way, they are really outshone by the sisters, uh... Which I think is to be expected, to be yeah. fair. You've got, like, powerhouse actresses with right. an established story, mm -hmm. and then you're supposed to match that or be as funny or whatever. And I yeah. get that they probably needed the girls to be more grounded because you can't have so many eccentric characters running around because even right. Sam Richardson and Tony Hale are a little bit more eccentric. And so kind of all the adults are taking up the bulk of the humor and the bulk of the... You're the right. weight that, of the that's movie, a very I guess. good point. Yeah. Um, that brings up for me just so many of these side characters that I loved through the movie. Um, yes. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, first of all, all the OGs return. And then, uh, you know, I thought, like, the, the, the dumb jock character was really fun and hysterical yes the mayor obviously uh as good as ever um uh you know uh tony hale of course um oh god buster uh, bluth being in a hocus pocus movie is like a dream sentence i never thought i would say <laughs> there you go <laughs> um so uh, what were some of your favorite moments from them or mm. I really did like, uh, I'm glad you brought him up. I really did like the boyfriend, actually. And I think it is a good, like you said, a good facelift for our typical tropes of like, right. the jock is just an asshole and blah, blah, blah. Like, this kid is just dumb. He's not yeah. like a mean spirited the, the, individual. The, the village yeah, idiot, as they said. Yeah, <laughs> that line was so good, too. That <laughs> cracked me up. Yeah. Um, he was just, again, like, he was just a dope, but it was nice to see him not, to be like, oh, I'm really sorry I made fun of you, like, I didn't mean to, and He's blah, like, blah, It's a fact, and you're witches, and you're weird. I didn't know that was mean to say, I'm just an idiot. Um, I like that. He's like, I have so many people to apologize <laughs> to. <laughs> like, yeah. So a that, little ham-fisted, but it was, mm -hmm. like, a nice update to not get that stereotypical, because I guess, actually, our villains... Quote unquote. Oh my God. It's, um, oh no. With the guys, Malibu. Oh my God. What are their names? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, ah. I don't remember their names, but, uh, yeah, the two, like, jerk a good little teens. update on there. Okay. Like, that they aren't just, you don't have a bunch of asshole teenagers running around, is what yeah. I'm saying. It was nice, mm. a nice little update and didn't feel like we were doing the same story again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on, on, on story and sort of some of the themes, um, how how did you feel the the movie ended? Oh, okay. Look, all right. Look, let I have to <laughs> fully. I have to disclose this. Uh oh. And I'm embarrassed. Oh boy. I cried. <laughs> uh, I did. I got I a little know. like emotional. I didn't go as far as crying. I but did. But it you know was what it was? Beautiful. It was. It was so sentimental. Oh, and you have sisters. It was so sister, sentimental. So, um, oh my God. And she tried, she like held my hand. I was like, Jordan, you're making this worse. Like, stop. <laughs> like, don't touch me. Um, but like, oh, okay. First off, it's the music because that score from the original. When, uh, when like Thackeray as the cat dies and they're saying goodbye, I always got emotional mm. during that part. So it's like the same when you hear the Harry Potter song at the end of the first uh. one. I'm going to get teary. It's just going <laughs> to happen. So that already got me. But then it is just the excellent acting of Bette I was Midler. Say, it ain't just, just the music there. Yeah. No, she 
sold it. And it's a very subtle, heartbreaking scene and not this like exaggerated. I'm wailing and but being like, oh, I think my heart is breaking because I don't have my I'm like tearing now. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> but it was like, oh, my God, I just couldn't Y'all better like, be watching I, this on YouTube because she's well up over up. there. It's a little mild Tear, oh, no, okay. I, I I'm can turning see it in your eyes. They're glazing uh, over. I I'm getting more like my dad agree. all the time. This is so bad. The only you get, the more gets, emotional you get. It's just a fact. I am, I'm a weepy but little yeah. bitch now. Um, you tell me what your thoughts were before I actually cry. You tell me what your thoughts are. <laughs> I I completely agree. At first, when um, the witches disappear. Uh, her, you know, Winifred, Sarah and Mary disappear and Winifred's left alone. I was, I was like, it, the character didn't seem angry enough and like, uh, revengeful enough. I was hoping to see some more of those notes. Um, like you're ruining my life. What have you done to me? Sort of, uh, feeling, but it was quickly like moved to this just, you know, heartbreaking moment where, you know, her sisters have been taken away from her. Her sisters of like 300 plus years or whatever. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then that just magical moment, like truly, if you're going to use the analogy, this is the time to use it, uh, where um, she dies and is reunited in death with her sisters. And she's just so blissful and, and happy and her acting just moves you. Um, and that, along with the... So the introduction and the outro of those mm. characters were just the strongest points of this movie, uh, in my opinion. I just fucking loved it. <laughs> it's And I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it definitely... Is it a little happy ending e of course it is but, but we're also that's talking for about different a, reasons kids. yeah, yeah. That, that was more for like, like, like some of the th themes being beaten over the head with the dialogue you know like we can tone that back for a sure bit and still get there um we don't right. have to say the phrase power should be shared 80 yeah. times and we don't ha like we get we understand that the theme is about this sisterhood and the theme is about connections and the people you have and how vital that is. We get it. I get it's for a kids movie, but kids are also not this stupid that we don't have to dumb it down so much. But I think it really re it redeemed itself in that scene in particular just because of how good Bette Midler is that mm -hmm. she was able to fully sell that. The, the music callback, uh, it all just worked really well for me it, but it could have absolutely gone the other way because of kind of the setup we got before okay uh and let's also talk about the book having more character in this movie but yeah that choice at the end to to now there's an argument with that he's really doing it for her best interest right but to to yes. betray uh, Bette Midler's character, Winifred, and go to the new witch uh, was cold. At least it felt I that agree. Way. I agree. And I, I will say they actually did a good job of giving every character that maybe didn't have as much to do. Because even Billy had a... I guess that's kind of arguable. <laughs> he had a bit more to do in this movie. It also didn't mm. at the same mm. time. He was kind of on a side quest with Sam yeah. Richardson. Yeah. <laughs> like, um... But it is nice that they gave them both a bit more to do, Deeper theoretically. Characters, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm kind of torn on that. Like, I think you're right. There's a motivation there and there's a reason why, but it is kind of this weird, like, book is very much. Yeah, book doesn't want her to corrupt herself, lose her, uh, her sisters, right? But, and then goes over in order for her to uh, be reunited, right? could be the the underlying motivation but it it takes you a minute to like think that that might be the case so that i agree cold. yeah so i'm not sure i'm not sure how well that was like packaged in a way that that was the outcome but yeah i don't know it it was nice to see a bit more of of the book but i also didn't know i i just feel like the name 
book wasn't really something that they did in the first one. They just she just said book, you know, but like uh, no one was like calling it book. And then everybody was calling it book this movie. So I felt like hmm. I had to readjust my thinking. <laughs> oh, well, to... Yeah, but the fuck's its name? <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good point. I also with the witch giving her book was I, I don't know if I liked or didn't like that. I'm still really on the fence about that in the beginning scene. Um it just is one of those lore pieces, I guess, I didn't need to have answered, but it also didn't detract a whole lot. I'm just not sure if I needed it You're or You're saying didn't in the opening it. backstory sequences where, yeah. she's, where she's first introduced to the book. Like, um, and if I was this all-powerful witch, I don't think I'd just be like, here you go, girl. Like, I'd be like, All mm-hmm. right, so that's a great conversation piece. Um, I have lots of questions about this OG witch. Um, uh you're right. What motivates her to give over the book? And, you know, she says, like, a witch is nothing without her covenant. So at this point, perhaps she has accepted that she is no longer the witch she used to be. She's passing the torch oh, to the next generation. Look, you gave it a whole more story than I feel like the movie even did. But they I feel you. They said yeah. it. I mean, this dialogue's they pretty s- fucking overt. <laughs> um, That's a valid you know. point. And, and then, of course, like, the end, it comes full circle. A witch is nothing without her covenant. And, you know, finally, the three young girls have come together there's resolution to their story um and which them walking by the way was actually kind of cute yeah i, I thought, thought that was, was a cute. really fun little play like why are we walking like this what the hell like, i saw it earlier <laughs> you know like <laughs> which was, was definitely fun. funny yeah when it first started happening it was so like exaggerated how big the steps were that was like okay guys you're like really overdoing this but uh, the fact that they like made a joke about it was was fun. Made um, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so back to the original witch. Um, mm. uh, are we going to get more story on her in a Hocus Pocus three? Uh, she returns at the end, you know, so she's still around. How come she didn't play a part in this story? Like, there's a lot of like little questions that I think are probably intentional in, in the sense of just like setting you up for uh, a larger franchise, which if ever there was like a world that deserves to come back and have a broader franchise and, and could have a long successful run. I think this is a great place to do it. Hocus Pocus. For sure. And I don't know how much like the thing is they've really wrapped up the storyline of the Sanderson sisters in that I don't think they could return back as like full villains because of Mm. where we ended this situation so if they were to come back and make this a trilogy i think we'd be looking at a different dynamic but even this made them less villains than they even were in the first one so i think there's a natural progression in a way to kind of moving it to a focus on them versus like the first film but it would be interesting to see because i think like you said this is a franchise that has opportunities to run in a different direction and i don't think i would even want to see like a re a constant rehash of like sure. the same coven of girls or the sanderson sisters all the time because i mean obviously everybody's getting older that can only last for x amount of time before it's not going to work anymore mm-hmm. um so it would be interesting if they elect to go a different route like you said maybe a prequel about that witch or Spin it off somehow. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I agree with Dial. It's just kind of. I think it's fun that they've expanded that universe, and I do look forward to you know what they do with it in the future because there's no doubt in my mind there's a Hocus Pocus three coming. Well, this is like what the biggest premiere Disney has had. I think for anything, is that right? Oh, God, they put I, something maybe. up being like, this is a huge deal, like a ton, of, which I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised which, at all. Hey, a ton of people uh, watch Disney, this. Disney, I don't say this very often, but thanks for making it free on Disney Plus. Oh, my yes. God. Hell yeah, yo. Save yeah. me 30 bucks. Um, Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's probably the only time you'll hear me like thank Disney, but uh We'll uh, we'll let that one slide by. <laughs> the one time they maybe saved you money in your entire life. This will be the one and yeah, only be, time that. And happened. they're gonna squeeze me dry later when my daughter wants like hocus pocus blankets and costumes and <laughs> yeah merchandising. Because yep. uh, they literally, I think on even my glass has Disney at the bottom of it. Like there's a sticker <laughs> with a trademark, so that's very yeah. accurate. I did want to ask you how you felt about. 
this is a very interesting situation where we don't actually really have a clear villain because nobody is a hundred percent bad and there's kind of a reason for everybody doing what they're doing even if it's not the best idea they have good intentions of sorts so i'm curious what you thought about the sanderson sisters becoming less of like less antagonistic and the fact we don't really have a clear villain how do you what did you do you think that worked do you think that didn't work well so this is really getting like big picture here in your personal world views, you know, I think shapes a lot of this. <laughs> For one, I think there is a clear villain and that's the three witches. I, I don't think it's as ambiguous. Um, in the end, there's redemption. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they have some clear motivation in terms of like wanting to stay alive and not return to the grave. But, um, you know, so, but they still want to eat children's souls and have no remorse But they don't about... do anything like that in this one. Like, we but, see it in the first one. There's none hmm. of that in this one. But it is their intent uh, that once they uh, kidnap uh, the girl that, you know, they get her blood to use in the spell, and then they do say that they're going to, like, eat her soul to stay young now that they're alive. So, I, you know, it's still the intent that they're going to keep eating people's souls but um (laughs) yeah and but you know like i i've heard a critique about movies doing this whole like there's no bad guys anymore like bad guys still have good motivation i like that there is um uh i i think people and characters are complex let's see the complexity everybody has a motivation um but what is missing when you go that route is uh, people that are just kind of evil innately, whether they're psychopaths, but that is still motivated by, you know, biology and not having, you know, the ability to empathize. Uh, you know, so, you know, while that is sort of removed from this world and other film worlds, um, I I don't really have a problem with it, especially in this type of movie. So that's fair. I just thought it was interesting that you know, again, they are just less antagonistic than they were in the first one, and there is a much bigger redemption. There really isn't a redemption in the first one. So, mm. and there's a lot more humanizing with showing them young versus like coming into it when they're older and they've sucked a child's soul out. Like that's where we came in on the first one. Yeah. So to me, that was just kind of interesting. And I was a little worried at first because I was like, are they playing this? Like everybody is like, yeah, we'll love each other. Everything's great. But oh I actually God. thought how it wrapped up, it worked out well. And I thought it was interesting that my assumption had been Tony Hale would have been the the bad guy, quote unquote. And then it ended up being Sam Richardson. And I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is a great point. Um it's super funny, like like you know, misjudging people, right? Is is kind of a a, a, a theme you could argue throughout this. Yeah, um, and and I love how like Tony Hell like has his like uh, what's what's the pilgrim's name or whatever. Um, he has oh, the, the moment where he actually trask, like, trask yeah. and and I thought that was oh, really and he funny. Does the acting, yeah. and he's like, oh, that was so bad. I have a bad impersonator. And he literally <laughs> is like the <laughs> nicest guy. Like he's just oblivious a little bit. And um, it, but then again, uh, what the hell's the guy's name? Gilbert, um, yeah. Sam Richardson. I just keep calling him Sam Richardson, yeah. but yeah, his character yeah. was Gilbert. Uh, I I do like you know again back to those like characters with honest motivations um that yes, yes. he made an honest yes. mistake they're misunderstood i think it's hysterical like look you guys have them wrong like they're not all <laughs> evil they just are misunderstood which you know is the truth about uh salem witches <laughs> yes yeah so he's not his motivation is not without a rationale either where yeah if you know as we look back in the annals of history and going <laughs> oh wow like these were just ladies primarily who were just a little bit ahead of their time and more individualistic which caused them <laughs> to then be labeled a witch so right. he's not wrong in that attitude it's a it's an accurate attitude 
dude. So it is funny then that that's what he does. And obviously they're not, <laughs> they are bad. Yeah. So, um, lots, lots that could be said about, about those themes and, you know, just choices of, of modern movies. But, uh, yeah, I want to talk about some of the like returning gags and, and characters. Yes. I loved seeing like the, the like costumes of, uh, the Madonna costume coming back. We yes! had, we had, uh, the costume of the devil and his wife. I thought it was hysterical, yes. but also you like, you get into this weird, like movies want to be super meta these days. Like why would those characters be that? Why would those, uh, people living in that town be those Halloween characters? Like, it doesn't, there's yeah. no, like, hey, oh, yeah, I'm being The Madonna my, uh, one makes sense. The Madonna one the Madonna totally one makes, makes sense. Because that's, that's just, that's Madonna. just a costume. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That one worked, that works really well for me versus, I think, like you said, the other one. Um, whereas if maybe they had even done a quick shot of it, it wouldn't be so distracting or take you out. Because sure, also, like, like actually, an Easter this, egg as opposed to, like, yeah, look at these people. Right here. Um, it did make it confusing, especially because we have that shot of people watching the movie where I was, okay, so first off, I want to preface it by saying there's a particular reason why that shot is included, and it's because those two actors are, are deceased, and it was a very sweet nod, yeah, with the two of that, with the two characters in it, so I think there's obviously a reason why they did it, it's a sweet little nod, but it creates this very confusing um question of does the hocus pocus movie exist in this yeah. universe and is that yeah. why everyone is like because the sanderson sisters are mentioned in the first one there's obviously a lore in town but this town there's specific costumes and looks and you mm -hmm. have to wonder how did everyone come to this conclusion that's based on i don't know like so it's just as weird because you have to ask yourself, does this exist in the universe or was this just a nod that then made it kind of convoluted? Yeah, it, it honestly just didn't work for me and it took me out of the story. Um, I yeah. appreciate like the tip of the hat to the deceased actors. I think do that with the Easter eggs of costumes being in mm -hmm. the flash mob would be a better way to go about it. Um, but it... it it was just confusing and distracting, like you mentioned. Um, another yeah. confusing and distracting thing was, what's up with the black cat? Like, did we just have to, like... Oh, uh, I'm 50-50. I'm 50-50 on that. Because if you're Gilbert and you saw that go down, and I'm assuming you maybe saw the cat, too, and you were somebody who then has a predilection for black cats, I think would maybe makes sense but at the same and right, i thought there's a right, fun like, line with that too of them being like thackeray i know it's you and then it's funny but is now, it that is it moment necessary? i liked but the cat kept coming into scenes and looking as if it was about to partake in the story partake in the action and never does and besides like a I witty agree, actually. joke it just yeah. played no purpose and just served some sort of like pretend callback to the, the character and because uh, i was wondering a couple times i think you were absolutely right because there was a few moments where i went yeah it looks like the cat's cat? about to jump on the book to like bring it back to the ground and let's also talk about how in the original movie it only took a cat jumping on the book to bring it to the ground where now it took a <laughs> chick hanging from it and another chick pulling her legs back to drag it down to the ground so, yeah that's a know, valid maybe point maybe um, cat had some powers being an invincible which gravity entity, is a different situation in this one i guess i'm not sure <laughs> yeah shit's changed in the 10 years or whatever yeah um man I, I don't know any any other oh some of the returning gags how do we feel about oh yeah i was honestly 50 50 on probably actually it was probably more worked for me than 50 50 but i'll say 50 50 mm -hmm. in what 
I felt like worked versus didn't work. Um, there were some really funny bits that were updated, uh, especially when they're in Walgreens and they pick up the face mask and oh she's like, it's God, a child's face. face. Mask that was, was hysterical. funny. Loved that it. was so funny. But um, some of the stuff leading up into that felt a little contrived where it just felt like a callback to call it back and wasn't necessarily helpful because I swear we had sliding doors in the 90s. I swear that's not uh, like a new... Man, that's a great Am I wrong? Call. That is a great call. They definitely had them. Uh, you don't see them in the first movie, but so maybe they just didn't happen to encounter them, I guess. But I did that's think it was true. hysterical. Like you, you literally see them walk across the Black River, the the road, right? So they're like yeah. familiar with this. They remember this, and then they encounter the new like modern age thing that throws them off, like the neon or the fluorescent lights and the moving doors. I thought it was funny. Um, okay, Alexa was pretty funny actually. Now that you say uh, modern that was updates. one of my Alexa favorites. was funny. Like that uh, was good. Saying something like, "Are you serious?" And it says, "I don't understand what you're asking me." Or whatever. You yeah, know. and she's like, "There's a tiny woman trapped <laughs> in the box." That was probably <laughs> the so best good. one. I I thought the Swiffer was funny, and then I was like, "Well, you kind of jumped the shark with the Roombas," but I. Great, I but you might actually be going there. Yeah, you actually I might be going there already. That, like the vacuum in a way, the Roombas there return for yeah. to actually play a role in the story. Um, you know, because uh, yeah, it, it it is like one of those things where like, all right, you like it looks like a fucking hoverboard or something. The kids are riding right. Yes, where, I didn't. I thought it was a hoverboard at first. Me I too. Feel so me dumb. too. I really thought that's yeah. what it was. Uh, yeah, maybe showing my age, but um. So it, I wasn't a huge fan at first, but then I loved that they did kind of have little characters of like their mind mm -hmm. of their own, and then they uh, did. And in it's fact, an update from their yeah. predecessors, like you said. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. So you nailed it. And then I think you hit on an interesting point too, which is where they utilize what they already know. So they do cross. They do cross the street without issue, and then they see um, the trolley. Later, and they call it like um, a smaller bus yeah, a or bus, something because yeah. they know what a bus Small is, bus, and um, so that that was a fun. Those ones worked really well for me because it's it's just building on what's there. Yeah, hundred percent agree. All right, there's a big aspect to this that we hadn't talked about that I gotta get mm. in uh, before this episode gets way too long. Um, yeah, production design and cinematography. Um, yes, um, beaut I like the production design a lot, in particular with the Halloween party I thought was excellent in the street, the big street Halloween party. And I actually thought the forest worked well. And I saw a lot mm. of people complain about the CGI moon and I think it's valid, but it actually didn't really ruin it for me. Bullshit. It was one of my favorite parts. Uh, Thank you. I liked it too, but I've seen a lot of criticism about it. I, it's fair. I can see why, but to me, the movie had first of all the production design was just big and full and detailed mm -hmm. and it was really a strength they had very strong sense of color through this movie uh all the way from yes. like the sets the wardrobes the high school scenes when they're in the school i thought were just beautiful the colors were just magical and and everything had this like kind of background haze to it very diffused feel uh, giving it that like mystical sense and then and then complementing that was the lighting they just crushed with uh all of these beautiful colored backlights um kind of working the like split tones of the like cyans and oranges and the like teals and uh uh like magenta colors worked in the background i just thought were very beautiful and just really mastered um it, it, it was really great and and with and the the moon really played like one of those roles in in the lighting um one of my favorite sets actually was the forest scene the sacred grounds yeah uh yeah it was a throwback to the like classic hollywood era like clearly it's a um a studio set you know the whole thing's built in a studio but it was just huge and beautiful and detailed yes. and the moon is uh 
fantastic. The whole thing's about witches, like, under the full moon. I, to me, it was just lovely. I agree. You said it so, so much more eloquently than I ever would have. But <laughs> you actually picked up on another good thing, too, which is I just want to say the costume design I thought was really excellent. And they were able to infuse a lot of the old stuff. So Cassie's wearing, like, a tie-dye shirt which is a nod to the original but then also wearing like um that big kind of cardigan over which is also like yeah. a, a nod to allison in the original so i oh and the witch the witch has and it was funny because i kept staring at the witch's costume going this is like very distinct but i can't like figure out why and it's a nod to danny's costume so it totally made sense to me i thought uh. they did such a good job of infusing it, but also making Danny's it seem Halloween very organic. Costume. You're yeah. so right. I never connected yeah. it. That That's brilliant. Oh, I had to read it. I totally yeah. missed it. So I, I had to read that. But I think they did a great job with putting that stuff in, but also making it feel like every character's costume, especially the younger girls. I was like, yes, this looks like something someone would wear, like the clashing but not clashing because this is like how you do it now. I'm not cool enough to do this stuff, but <laughs> the clashing like outfit uh, for Izzy that she has the two different patterns. Um, but it's very, it's just a very modern take, but I like what you said of also being able to infuse this kind of old style to it. So it felt like a very nice meld to me when it came right. to production design and costume design and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I thought production, production value in general was just spot on i didn't think like the camera was doing anything particularly interesting or or groundbreaking but everything but i think it actually speaks to the mastery because it never stood out as like confusing or distracting or trying something only one scene beyond. okay what, what was that one scene that really bothered me, I realized on a second viewing, I didn't catch it mm. as much the first time, but the second time when the girls are trapped in the cellar, it has this very comic booky like flash side, flash side, and I was just like, I I, I found it distracting. I didn't like it very much. Um, I don't know if it's because the space was smaller. They were trying to make something more dynamic. Where the rest of it, there's such a production involved that they don't need to rely on intense camera angle uh -huh. movements. But that was a little much for me. I didn't like that scene. I noticed it stood out really bad for me the second time around. Interesting. I'll have to rewatch that. I I don't recall it visually very well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fair. Um, what are your final thoughts, Taylor? Oh, I mean, I said it at the top. I really feel like this was the best outcome humanly possible. I don't know what they would have done to make it any better. It was never, ever going to beat the original. I said it is a definite bummer we didn't get our OG kiddos, but there is a reason why they just couldn't make that work and it's mm -hmm. understandable so like you know i appreciate they tried to make that happen just couldn't um but they did update it in ways i felt were very important it's a much more diverse cast it's a lot more female focused um it has a great infusion for older and younger generations. The older generation, such as us, is going to appreciate most of the callbacks, is going to appreciate the inclusion of characters like Tony Hale. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, man, we, like, did not touch on Doug Jones, but I just want to give him, like, a little nod here. That man is just the best and can pull off any costume in the world, and he's just incredible. <laughs> so I just want to give him a, a, little, yeah. a little loving. It was a lot little of fun. loving here. Yep. Um, but it it was just fun. It, is this like going to go down for me as a film? I think is one of the best things I've ever seen. It's absolutely not. And will I always prefer the original? I always will. But this was fun and getting to show my niece and nephew this and have them be so enthralled with what was going on mm. is exciting to see like a new generation get excited about the thing you were excited about. Yes. So for me... It's a it's a win. Could it have been stronger in a lot of areas? Yes, it could have. But I don't think I'm harping on it as hard as I've seen other people. And I really enjoyed it. I feel like if you love the first one, it's kind of impossible to not appreciate this. So those are my kind of thoughts. What are your I'm, I'm going to echo all of that. 100 percent agree. Uh, I have a feeling next Halloween I'll be watching Hocus Pocus 1 followed by Hocus Pocus 2. Yes. I, I think it's going to be <laughs> added to the list of October movies for me um, just because it is fun to watch 
you know, a series back to back. Uh, go check it out. It's still in theaters. I think that's, you know, you don't in have Disney. To. It's just going to stay on Disney. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you don't have to watch this on a big screen, but it's obviously a better experience. So. Oh, um, and outdoors people. That's the way to do it. I thought that was so much fun. Yes. I'm loving my outdoor projector. Uh, you know, the best purchase. I think we ought to <laughs> like put uh, some Amazon uh, links on our socials so people can follow suit because I feel like I've gotten a pretty good setup. I'm really impressed. Uh, my setup in total was like maybe 350 bucks. Um, yeah, so, mine wasn't bad either. It was a pandemic purchase that uh -huh. I don't regret at all. Yeah, for not a lot of money, cheaper than a TV, you can have your own outdoor theater. So it's the best. <laughs> but we digress. I well, loved yeah, it. This you is loved a, it. And this is just a start of our spooky season. Yes. This is the first episode. We have some great stuff. So we have stuff. so many. We have so many more, and I guess uh, we're not ruining it by putting it out because the post is going to come out yep, the same day. Yeah, post is but, coming. Um, we are covering our next film. We are covering is the haunting. Do not get confused and watch the one from the nineties. We are not recommending. Don't watch pull that one. CJ. <laughs> yeah, CJ was like, I was really confused why you picked this movie. It was not great, and I, I was like, the the, the original's 60s? better. Like, don't the watch one the sixties. Yeah, and um, so there was a little confusion there. So don't be confused. Watch the one from the 60s. We highly recommend ahead of the uh, episode releasing. It's great. That's actually another projector movie I did last year, Ooh. and it is excellent outside. Very nice. Uh, I love talking about that one, and I love talking about this one, and I would love to talk with you all more. So hit us up on our socials. We love hearing from you. Yes, please do. Pod under your bed at Gmail. Pod under your bed is our handle for our Instagram and Twitter. And we don't give Facebook enough love, but we are on there too. Um, so send us a message with recommendations. If you guys have awesome uh, Sanderson costumes or actually just kick ass Halloween costumes, and we'd love to feature them. Shout out to your them. sweater, Taylor. I noticed it like halfway through the episode. Hey. That is awesome. Great My touch. sister did give me this one. I was really excited Love about it. it. I think we're gonna have to do an in costume episode. Is what we I'm gotta, thinking. We gotta do more. We gotta Halloween do more. costumes. We gotta do it. But yeah, send us uh, send us your stuff. We'd love to post it. And if you guys have any movie recommendations, we are totally up for yes. covering something we've not seen. So hit us up. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>